if you have observed in the last couple of years at least, the time has become very fast, absolute speed. Actually, this is a very interesting time. It's actually a blessing to be alive in today's time. This is mainly because one year of your current time is almost like 50 years about a century ago. That is the pace that we have come to. The speed has increased. So, uh, to be alive at this time is very important. And if you are alive with awareness, why we are here, this is even more important. Many of us do not know what is the importance of this time and why we are here. And uh, many of you would have heard about the shift that happened in 2012 to 012. What has happened during this time, basically, it has started from 1986, according to me. The this, this momentum started increasing. Uh, the transition of time happened, according to me, from 1986, approximately. You can't really say on this date. Likewise, you can't say that the 2012 shift happened on 21st of December. I would call this as landmarks or milestones. Something to something you can feel or be tangible about in time. Because we need to know how far we have traveled. That is why we have milestones on the road. It's similar. So we are keeping certain dates in mind so that we know, okay, we have arrived here now. We are taking the next step. We are moving forward. But uh, most importantly, it's not the milestone that matters. It's the awareness that matters. Oh, I have reached until here, and this is my destination, and this is the distance. So, what has happened is the time started speeding up, and, and the bodies that moves with time, like us, have no choice. We do not have a choice. Body is evolving. Body is moving forward with time. Time takes us. And the advantage is, if you are moving in awareness with time, the speed is like that. The speed really takes you to the complete dissolution, complete awareness with the universe. So, the shift is for sure. And the advantage of our time is that, as I said earlier, one year is almost like 50 years, pre-1986. So, we have started moving forward much. The disadvantage is, if we are not aware of our time, what happens is, we will not be stable. We, we will always be uh, entertaining anxieties, fears, and instability. The stability happens when you know, yeah, this is the speed. I'm moving with the speed. And the destination is total dissolution, being one with the universe. There is nothing in between. So with this awareness, if we move forward, it's a very good idea. That is why this meditation is about unhooking. If you do not unhook yourself from the past places, people, situations, time, locations, and you are free, you are, your mind is moving with your body, with time, it is not easy. Because part of our consciousness lies in the past, part we are in the present. So, there will be a, a, a bit of conflict in our daily life. This is one point, please remember that. Second point is that, <clears throat> why we insist on 360 degrees, if you have followed this meditation, for your information, this meditation is free to download from the website. And if you have any problem to get it, collect any CD and you can copy it or if anybody else wants it, you can give it also. No copyright. Don't worry about it. This is, uh, I do it as a service to the society. So, uh, why 360 degrees? See, usually every human being <coughs> operates in 120 degrees from this year to this year. This is our daily operating level. Where our heads can turn. This is not enough. 
for full awareness. This is enough just to operate in the daily life because all our senses are in the front. Our mind goes out with the senses to the front. When mind and eyes, mind is with the eyes, we see. Otherwise, we just look, we don't see. Mind is with the tongue, we taste. Otherwise, if you are watching the television, we'll be eating, we have no idea what we're eating. And we will not know the taste. If mind is with the ear, we listen. So mind has a major role to play. And we have five senses to know the world. What is the world? We taste it, we feel it, we touch it, we hear it, we smell it. This is what we do. So, with the eyes, with the nose, with the ears, with the tongue, with the skin, we are feeling the world. Everything is in the front. We are front-oriented. All, all beings are front-oriented. What about the 240 degrees behind us? This is important. Until that is connected, you are never complete. I'm sure if each one of you would have felt some level of incompleteness at some point in time. This is not the real me. Who am I? This question everybody would have asked. I am not what I seem to be. I must be more than this. The answer is in completion. Completion means when you took the first ever birth on this plane, you came with full awareness. You came to experience the world. And to experience this world, you need the support of the elements, such as the earth, air, water, space, fire. This is the body. This is what we call the body, a mixture of all this. And, and when we leave the body, it goes back to nature. So we are using the, we are picking up the body from the nature to experience the world, and we dissolve the body, and we go, on, go further. So, this was the original idea. We came here to feel the earth. But what is the, if you look at the earth, what is the main thing that we experience here? Of course, we can easily say relativity. Relativity created the birth, wherever you are. Or relativity created duality, or reality, rea relativity created realities in any plane. But here on earth, the main thing is relationship. We are here to experience relationships in relation to something that we are. You are apart from me because in relation to where I am sitting, you are sitting elsewhere. So we started experiencing relativity in various dimensions such as father, mother, brother, sister, children, uh, boss enemies, friends, whatever, all in relations. So this is why we came here. But then our operating tool was mind. We needed the mind to feel all this. So mind gave you identifications. Mind told you this is you. You are this name. You are this qualification. You are this form. You are this uh, uh, this identity, identity such as the name uh, or the, the uh, tradition or the family. Like this, we became more and more uh, compartmentalized or you can call yourself put in frames. Actually, we are frameless. We don't have any frames. But because we have a body, because we have identifications, we started feeling the frames. And mind produced ego. Ego tells, this is what you are. You are the qualification. You are the money. You are the position. You are the Purchasing power to be uh, and uh, all this and then we lost track We got entangled within this. That is when we missed the 240 degrees Only then we missed 240 degrees, but it's available. It's always available. You can get it anytime you want you can tap into it anytime you want Please understand awareness is almost like your shadow. It follows you ever ready for you to tap into. But we do not know that it's following us. You know, we don't look at our own shadows. Mm -hmm. We do not even remember that there is a shadow. So what happens is we do not tap into it because we get caught up with the daily life. Once this is conglomerated, 
we are complete again. That is why basing on the spine is important. We have to shift from the front to the middle. Anxieties and fears and all these things, it becomes, it comes into us, it makes us vulnerable, it makes us incapacitated, disabled, only when you operate from the front. The same things cannot touch you when you are based in your spine. Try it, you will know. Now, I'll give you another example. When you sit down quietly, just close your eyes and feel the spine. Just any part of your spine. Automatically, your consciousness or your awareness would have shifted to your third eye, the space between the eyebrows. This is the proof. We are going beyond the normal senses to the higher dimension. Third eye is a higher dimension. It is the pathway to the higher dimension. So we have the faculty within us. You do not need any religion, any, any guru, any guide or anybody to tell you this because you are complete. This is the truth. All of us are complete. Gurus or masters are road signs. They just tell you this way you go, you will reach the destination. It's up to us to walk. It's up to us. This is an individual journey. Because we came as individuals. We are born alone. We will die alone. We are experiencing various aspects of relationships while we are here. So, coming back to the time. The shift has happened. Time has become faster. Speed has increased. Being in the present is the right thing to do now. If you are not in the present, the tilting times, the shifting times can pull you down. This is one aspect. Second, as I told earlier, your one year of um, concentrated effort is almost like 50 years of concentrated effort beyond pre-1986. So this, this time is very important. You are growing faster. Now the other dimension you can see, what has happened after 2012? Just look. Whatever the basic nature of every being is, there are 7 billion people in the world. Each person is a unique creation. Nobody is a factory product. Everybody are unique. Nobody can be compared with another. This is the beauty of creation. Not only human beings, all beings. All are uh, unique. So, whatever our basic nature has been, got enhanced. It just got boosted up. So a person who is by nature compassionate, became more compassionate and started <coughs> expressing it. A person who is by nature angry, becomes more angry and starts expressing it. A person by nature generous, becomes more generous and he will start expressing it. But we are all a mixture. We are never one aspect only. So various aspects have come forward and started expressing. This is what we see in the world today. And this will be more in the days to come because as we shift, there are yugas, we call it yugas in the Indian tradition. There are years which has its particular, state, uh, particular uh, taste and smell and touch or flavors. Each yuga had its flavor. So we have gone through various yugas and we are supposed to be in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is a, is a yuga of speed and activity and also extreme representations of duality like the good and the bad or like the you can see in the feature films, the villain and the hero. That aspect is more this time. Every time we had it, but this time it's much more, the dimensions and the diversions. So, this time, the war between the, the good and the bad is much more. That means the, the kind and the cruel. You can see this aspect much more in this life, in this lifetime, of this 10 years, let me say, from 2012 to 2022. And 2022 onwards, it is said to be, the birth of the Satya Yuga, the Yuga of Truth. And that, that is what we, we are being prepared for. Most of the great masters who are still operating in this plane are working only on this now. Please be aware. And that is why their consciousness is also available. 
we are using various methods to reach them. Each person has a style and a method that suits them to reach them. This is also fine. That is why I said it is not in what you believe in, with your religion, what is your uh, uh, path, what is, who is your guru. It's not important. It's important to be aware that truth is what you are seeking. You know, the consciousness that Jesus represented, Buddha represented, Krishna represented, that is the path of the truth. You know, earlier times, whoever told truth, we crucified them. Because we never liked truth. We like to live on pretensions and lies. You know, we always liked relative truths, not real truths. Jesus, all his life, only spoke truth. He always walked the path of purity. Why did we assassinate him? Because we never liked it. You know, tradition, if you look at our, our history, you can see Socrates spoke truth. We gave him poison. All the masters, all the great uh, souls who came here out of compassion to guide the world, to a better life, better understanding, better awareness. What we do is, we assassinate them as fast as possible, then put the picture on the wall and say, this was a great man. <laughs> you know, there is an advantage to it. First is that we dispose them off, nothing to worry. Second thing is that we can interpret their teachings the way we like. Um. You know, so this helps us, how we create our own religions. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very convenient. <laughs> and we can always say, this is not me. I didn't say this. He said that. <laughs> anyway, he's not there to kick your butt, so it's okay. <laughs> we are very funny people, you know. So, anyway. So, the, the, the time of truth we said hands reach. And you can see this happening. Don't just believe what I say. Feel it. You will know what I'm saying. You know, I'm just giving you an outline, a guidance. But as I said earlier, this is an individual journey. Since it's an individual journey, it is, it is a responsibility for you to explore yourself first, not explore anything outside of you. Because truth lies within you. And truth can be only understood inside. Outside, as I said, it's all relative truths. You are separate from me because I am separate from you. But consciousness-wise, we are one. We cannot have a separation. Soul-wise, we are related. We can't have separation. Electricity is the same. Sometimes it, uses, it, it goes through a washing machine. It washes clothes. It goes through a dishwasher. It washes dishes. It, it goes through a refrigerator. It cools stuff. So electricity is never, the, never different. But the utensil is different. The operating tools are different. Likewise, your body is different, my body is different. It's the same, the aspects are same. Both are made out of elements. And uh, soul-wise, you and I are one. So this is the fundamental understanding that we must have as we go further in the path of whichever path, spirituality. And <clears throat> once you are clear that we are one, there will be no differences, you know. Whatever is, uh, is in, the, in the universe, it's expression of ourselves. There's nothing apart from us. So, from 2012 to 2022, the first is the initial phase. Actually, we are going through the initial phase. It will last for another 3-4 years, let's say, until 2015 or 16. That the, the negative will be much more than the positive. It's always like that. If you look at the history, the negative wins first. Right? The negative comes and takes victory in the beginning. Eventually, the positiveness comes forward. Just imagine coming back to Jesus' uh, life. If, you, if Jesus accepted all what the people wanted him to accept and agree, do you think there will be Christianity today? Nobody will remember him. His power was he stayed with truth, uncompromising, no conformity, you see? 
and he his dramatic exit. There are many theories that Jesus lived after he left the cross. One person asked me in Europe the same question. I said, are you bothered about that? Why don't you just follow the teachings? You know, it doesn't matter. Like if I die tomorrow or if I leave everything and go tomorrow, my only relevance is today. Because if I lead a life as a hermit in the caves of Himalayas, how does it matter to you? As long as I am providing to the world, as long as I am catering to the world, as long as I am talking, that's the only time when there is a relevance. So the relevance is when you are active and contributing, isn't it? There are members of our family who left the family, means he passed on, they passed on. We love them, there is no problem. But are they relevant in our daily life? No, because they have completed their task and they have gone on, they moved on. Like that, Jesus' main contributions were all, when he was talking, he was moving, he was performing. After that, whether he's, he lived or whether he did not live, this is not our concern today. See, we are more worried about the history than the teachings, than the message. We should be focusing on the message. I always say, don't marry the Guru, marry the teachings. You know, Gurus can be quite uh, erratic. <laughs> so, so, it is important to understand this aspect of existence. It is important to know that the truth is what we are looking for. The reality is what we are looking for. Not the person. The person is a representation. Person represents an ultimate truth. And he delivers. So, the victory of the negative will be, will always happen in the first. Likewise, you can see the feature films. The villain makes all sorts of problems in the beginning, then the hero comes back and destroys him. <laughs> Likewise, uh, Jesus was assassinated, but today, all over the world, people are worshipping him. Isn't it? Same with, uh, with uh, all the great masters. People <coughs> respect and worship them today, because often, a person who is a contemporary is not accepted. Again, as I said earlier, it's because we have to handle a personality. A person and a personality is difficult to handle. A message is easier to handle. Because we have a picture in the mind, we adapt that picture to the person who is not existing. It's easy to understand. So we are actually following our mental image rather than a real person and a personality. When you have to handle a real person and a personality, it is not easy. You know, just imagine you have a high picture of a guru or a master, a, a glorified image on the wall. And, and uh, somebody is telling you, hey, he goes to toilet every day. My God, finished. <laughs> you know, because we can't accept such realities. We expect the person to not eat, no toilet, <laughs> and we think he should be like this. This is our problem. We created the image. We put the picture person in the frame. Now if the person is beyond the frame, we reject the person. Yeah. You know, this is human nature. We must be aware of it. So it's important to know that eventually truth will win. Truth has to win. Because truth cannot be hidden for long. But it's like the waves of the ocean. When the ocean waves are hitting more and more, we will not know what is the peace within the ocean. But sometimes when the ocean is calm, we understand it's very peaceful. You know, we are that peace. So 360 degree awareness is important to move forward. And being in the present is very important. So we are living in interesting times, excellent times. And this is my message to the world. Be yourself. This is your individual journey. And I always ask people to be, to carry two things with them. One is faith. Believe in any religion. Believe in any master. Believe in any God. But be 100% in it. Don't partial. Because you can wear the shirt that suits you. You can only wear the dress that suits you. Even if I say, this is not good, this is not bad, this is not good, this is bad, I'm lying. Everything is religion in the world outside. But the truth is one within you. What a, we are living in a relative world. 
It's all in relation to, as I said, whatever you see outside is relative. It is not permanently morning. There will be night coming up. And it cannot be permanently night. There will be morning, sooner or later. We have arranged some sunshine today for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, this is the way the world goes. You see? So, relative truths are fine, provided you know this is relative. Otherwise, we start believing in it, we will have problem. Why? Expectation builds up. We build up expectation. And we become... Expectation always brings suffering. Sorrow. You know, expectation leads to sorrow. Dependency leads to sorrow. We say, I expected this person to behave to me in this way. Oh, he, he behaved differently. I don't like it anymore. Relationships are finished. You know, this is how fragile we are. But if we are, if we allow a person to be himself or herself, this is their expression, this is their life too. This person has come to this earth to experience all what they are experiencing. And we just allow them to be themselves. Peaceful. We are peaceful. Others are peaceful. This is the way existence will be further to the birth of Satya Yuga. I would presume, this is my mental calculation or my awareness, that post-2022, Satya Yuga takes birth. The Yuga of Truth. The Yuga of Happiness. Perpetual place. Within which you can probably see a lot of destruction, a lot of uh, calamities, a lot of ending. As I said, it's a clash between the good and the uh, or I would say no, good and evil are basically a very uh, cliched words because so many feature films have happened. So, <laughs> I would say it's between reality and non-reality or between relative truth and truth. This is probably the better understanding. It's that we must base ourselves in truth sooner or later. And as Satya Yuga progresses, like we chose our birth at will, we will chose our death at will. How, how do we do that? We will change our breathing pattern from the front to the middle. That means the soul entered through the top of the head. That is why if you look at the top of the head of small children, very soft. That is the way the soul entered the body. The soul will exit through the same space. For which the breathing will happen through the middle. You know, instead of the front. So, it, it becomes uh, uh, the, the, the pathway with which the soul entered closed because of our ego, our identifications, wrong identifications, while in the relative world. That will change to the real identification of who we are, who am I, what am I here for, what is my purpose. All these will start hitting. And once we, once we are clear about that, we would automatically know that our breathing pattern has changed. And that change will lead to 